Hello and welcome to 6 JMeter training video tutorial. Uh, so we are going to learn a couple of new things in this session. So let's have a look at uh, what we would uh, learn in this session. We will have a look at how we can use user-defined variable for URL. Uh, we will also see an example of Ajax request uh, on a website for Zalando on UK. We will see how uh, we have Ajax request being played from JMeter. We would also observe that there are a couple of failures when we play the request. Then we would see a couple of uh, other things, for example, XSRF token and how we can modify our AJAX request to consider it. We would also see regular expression extractor, which is a post-processor element. And then we will rerun the modified script. Uh, all right, so let's uh, begin with uh, externalizing the application URL. So I have the uh, JMeter open here and here I have something called test plan. So I just named it shop test plan. And here I have added a variable which is a user variable with the name app and the value is salando.co.uk. You can add variables by clicking the add button and you can remove them by, by just hitting the delete button. All right. Now this variable is something which is the application URL and this is something which we can specify in request default, HTTP request default. So we saw in previous sessions that values which are common in samplers can be taken from HTTP request default. So here is something where I have specified $app. This is how I refer the variable. The syntax is dollar in brackets the name of the variable. So I don't have to hard code the URL here. So URL is defined here. The URL variable is defined here. And then this variable is passed to all the samplers because I have a specified server name as $app in the HTTP request default. So this is all about how you can define more user variables and you can refer them in your test plan. Okay, let's proceed. So let's see one example of a JAX request. So if you have been dealing with or if you have been navigating or searching the web from quite some time, you may have heard the term called AJAX, uh, which stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. The advantage of using AJAX is that it gives better user experience because uh, there would be no page reload, the request is sent uh, behind the screen to the server and response is taken back and DOM, the document object model of page is modified without refreshing the page. So it gives better user experience. So let's see an example of a JAX request. So I'm here on Zalando UK site, uh, which is a shopping website. So let me, let me search on something called jeans here. All right, so I search for jeans. And I'm on women category, it doesn't matter. Okay, and now if I click on one article here, then I can see its details. Yeah, so these are the details, but I'm more interested in a JAX request here. So the JAX operation here is when I add article to cart. So if I select a size, and if I say at back, you would notice that page is not refreshed, and on my back, I would be able to see one quantity. So let me hit add to back. Yeah. So this is where article has appeared in the cart without any modification. So this is an Ajax request. So this is a request which I have already captured in JMeter. Uh, I used bad boy for this. We had seen example of bad boy in past. So you should also be able to record it. So I have three samplers here. One is catalog, uh, which is the jeans page, which I had opened initially, then add article to Ajax cart and then get Ajax cart. So these are the three requests. Out of these requests, add article to Ajax cart and get Ajax cart or Ajax request. For example, if I, okay, I don't have to remove this article. If I just bring up Firebug, you can see that these are those two Ajax requests. And if I go to net and let me clear it and let me add article again. Yeah, so, okay, there are quite a few requests, but we are not interested in all of them. So we need first post request, which is, which ends with Ajax slash cart slash item slash some other parameters. And this is, this is the request, cart item and some parameters. And this is where JSON is being passed to the server. And second is get Ajax cart. That is one overlay appears as soon as I add article to cart. So this is the second request, which is Ajax slash cart slash question mark cb and some other parameters. So this is the request which was captured using bad boy. So it should be pretty easy to record it. All right. 
So this is how Ajax operation looks like. So let's see what we have next. So we have added uh, a test plan wherein we have the Ajax request and let's try to run it wrong. So I have my user group set to one because we are just debugging it. We are not really doing a load test. And in fact, it's a public website. So you should not be doing a load test on it because company might sue you. Okay, so now when I execute it, let's see what happens. Mm, I will move to three. So first request, second request, third request. So first request was successful. There are a couple of sub requests in it. Uh, second and third request have failed. Second request and the third request which deal with Ajax operation have failed. So let's see what's happening here. If I click on it, I see one error message. It says 400 and it says bad request. And another get Ajax card has the same error message. And it doesn't really give me much indication as to what went wrong. So let's try to do some more analysis and see what's happening. Mm. Okay, so let's see. Let's see back our Firebug console. In Firebug console, if I extend the first request that is adding article to cart, then I can see what request headers are passed. So there is, there are some errors, content type and all, but I'm not interested in that. Except, okay, pragma, refer, user agent. Ah, there is something interesting here. So if you see here for Ajax request, there is X request width and XSRF token. These two parameters are passed. Let me see what's happening in the JMeter script. In the JMeter script, I have a header manager here. And in header manager, I have XSRF token, okay? But let me see if there is any discrepancy here. Uh, so let me go back to the response of first run, which is view results in table, uh, sorry, view results in tree. I come to catalog and let me see the response data here. So what is the response data for first request? So I can search XSRF here and see what it is. Yeah, so this is the XSR value which is in the first request. So this is a security mechanism or security security token which is uh, in the web applications you would encounter to uh, to recognize that it's the same user from one request to another request. So this is the first XSRF token which was issued to me. So it begins with something called EZ, V7, etc. So let's see our uh, uh, header here in the second Ajax request. In fact, the first Ajax request and the second sampler. So let me click header manager. Let's try to remember this. It begins with EZV7 in the first sampler. And what is the header manager here? Ah, now if we see the request is different here, the token is different here. And this is the problem. This is why application cannot handle it. So what we have to do now is we have to somehow extract the XSRF token from the first request. And then we have to pass in to the header manager of the second Ajax request as well as to the third Ajax request. How do we do that? Let's see. All right. So this is where regular expression extractor comes into the picture. Regular expression extractor is a host processor element which would let us extract the value of uh, any 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 parameter for that matter. But since we are interested in XSRF token here, it would let us capture the XSRF token from the first sampler, which is catalog. And then we can pass on this XSRF token to the second and third. And in case we had more samplers, then we could have done that also. So I have already configured a script in such manner. Let's open this. Yeah. Yeah, with regular expression extractor, I'll say no, I don't want to uh, save anything. And let me extend it. It is same as the first request with minor modifications. So this is where I have the regular expression extractor. How do we add regular expression ex extractor? Since I want to capture the XSRF token from the first sampler, I will add it on the first sampler, which is catalog. So just right click on it, say add, post processor element, regular expression ex extractor, and then it appears here. All right, so we have a couple of uh, settings here, which is which are as follows. It's the name of the extractor, then uh, where do we have to apply it? So I have selected only main sample, uh, then we are to check for the value. So I would check in the entire body. It needs a name because this is a name which we would refer in further samplers. So the name is XSRF token here. You could give any other name. Now what value to extract? So there is a regular expression here. So we know the parameter name is val.xsrf token equal to in 
uh, bracket there's a regular expression for now you can understand that it would extract any value which is followed by this string then there's a template template will capture the value from the regular expression uh, in the body of the response uh, how many match or which match which number to match so I have given one here and in case it doesn't find it then I have just mentioned take that string as x product token not found now having done that we have to modify header manager in second sampler which is add article regex card and this is the header manager now here you notice that we had a different XSRF token in the previous request but now I am referring to the XSRF token variable here so this is a variable which we specified in regular expression extractor which is XSRF token and now I can refer it in header manager using dollar in brackets XSRF token in the same way I have added this in third sampler as well which is get ajax card this is uh, a pop-up which we saw after we added article to cart and then we have HTTP header manager here as well and here XSRF token I have given the same as previous sampler which is dollar take the value from XSRF token variable which we specified here all right let's try to run it and see what happens so I bring control here mm. all right so now it's running since we have random timer it takes some time and now everything is green so let's see it here we have the catalog here this is the response data and if I see XSRF here let me search on it so it is a value which begins with O cap capital O small O T and, and other things and let's see what is being passed in the add article to cart so this is a request so this yeah this is the XSRF token which is being passed here because it is captured from the first sampler and in the third sampler also the same XSRF token is being passed here and this is why our script succeeds now so this is uh, one use case of AJAX request and we see that AJAX request is no different from any other HTTP uh, sampler or HTTP request but at times you may encounter that AJAX request by itself doesn't work in this specific use case we found it was because of XSRF token but then you may also encounter that you have different session ID or some other parameters and then you may have to configure your script in such manner that you read values from previous sampler and then you pass it on to next sampler at times you may have more complicated AJAX examples for example you may have to send two or three AJAX requests uh, simultaneously I couldn't find any such example online but if I find that then I'll create a tutorial for that as well all right so our new modified script works now which has ajax request uh, and everything looks fine now so let's see if we have missed anything so we started with the seeing user defined variable which we had in test plan then we saw an ajax request example we replayed the script and analyzed the failures and then we observed headers for the ajax request in firebug so any point of time you have any failure in the script try to analyze what headers are there and if these headers are in persistence with a previous request and if you see any discrepancy then this is where you should focus on and see okay this is what I have to modify in my script I have to pass on right parameters to my script and then we modified our script and then we also had a look at regular expression extractor and then we re-executed our test script okay so this brings us to an end of today's session so if you enjoyed watching this tutorial please click the thumbs up See you next time. Bye-bye. Happy learning.